Hello and welcome to Cherwell TV. Today we're at the Oxford University Aeronautical Society event with Kyle Grant. His lecture, Occupy Mars, focuses on his research into plants and whether they can survive in Martian or lunar environments. We're here to find out some more. So we're here today at the first meeting of the Aeronautical Society in 2017. Could you tell us a bit more about the Society and what you're hoping to do? Yes, yeah, so Oxford Aeronautical Society is quite a uh, young society because I set it up last year in March. My study here in Oxford, I found there's no aeronautical society at, at all in Oxford. That was ridiculous. So I said I must like set up one so like people here in Oxford can get more closer to aeronautical world. So um, tell us a bit about the project that you're working on at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, so this project is kind of funded through the uh, programme that I'm on here at the university, the Synthetic Biology programme. Um, a lot of the work that I do is actually directly relevant and our collaborators at NASA will be using it in the future as we publish. Um, it's moving kind of slowly as we slowly gain momentum, especially with testing the plants and getting the growth promotion effects that we're looking for under our belts. But we're hoping that in the next kind of couple of months, as we publish a lot of the circuitry that I was showing in the talk earlier today, um, refined, we'll start to see really, really beneficial effects that will be awesome for space as well as here on Earth. I mean, I think for a first event, um, we did all right. Uh, there were no major hitches, and uh, Cal is a great speaker. He always delivers. Um, it was a really interesting topic. I think we engaged lots of people, hopefully got lots of new members, and I hope the rest of the events go as well. He's like such a good speaker, as, as James was saying. He really transmits you. He's like, oh, that's actually something we all could do, you know? So he's kind of like, yeah, closer. I think it gives like a very good feeling. So Mars looks like a pretty barren place. What are we going to change about Mars that makes it um, somewhere we can grow these plants? Before we can even attempt to change it, we need to know for sure, is there life even there? If there is, we obviously don't want to touch it because it will be the only other example that we have of life evolving elsewhere on, on another planet other than our own. So what kind of plants are we planning to grow on Mars? Yeah, good question. So uh, one of my favourites will be the tomatoes and potatoes. Um, in actual fact, we're looking even at combining the two into one plant. So that is you take the root system of a potato plant and then the shoot and fruit system of a tomato, graft them together and you get your chips and ketchup plant at the same time. What are you hoping that perhaps people in the audience today, what do they take away from it? And you know, how are you yourself, you know, what are you taking away from these talks? So uh, our study is basically aiming at uh, three different parts. Like one is inviting famous people in aeronautical field to come here and give talks to Oxford students and general public. And one part is organising workshops. And another part is we're going to organise like visit, visiting tours to uh, aeronautical companies. I hope that the Aeronautical Society takes off. Um, I hope, you know, people get involved in that. But, I mean, really, it's just to have some fun. Um, it's interesting talks, interesting speakers. Um, getting people out there and involved in something midweek. So I see you've got some like mock-up Martian soil there. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, exactly. So um, this is JS1 Martian regular simulant. So this is made um, by NASA and their contractors. And essentially it's made to be as close a chemical makeup to Martian regolith at, we know of. So already the Martian regolith that we get sent, we add more chemicals to because we have more information that says this part of Mars has more salt or has more heavy metal oxides and things like that. So we can tune it to particular regions on Mars. As far as you don't go into too much detail so that people can actually get lost because they don't have the adequate background, I think everyone can enjoy it. Like even little kids, you know, like if you explain them in a very funny way, they, they are going to say like, oh yeah, planes and I know rockets are amazing. And when are we going to see plants growing on Mars in the next how many years? Um, if I was a betting man, I would say probably in a decade uh, to be safe. Um, Fifteen years more likely. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Carl, thanks very much. Thank you very much.